From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. We are going to back up just a few weeks here because we want to refer to something that happened right after the attack in France. France rallies millions against terror. And then even Christians who convert are beheaded. Oh my. And Arab terrorists try to burn Jews alive in Jerusalem, right there in their own country. Oh my, we're going to deal with so very, very much today. And uh, Jack wanted me to just refer to something that happened only two days ago. And I guess uh, you're going to tell him about what happened. If you see my coat sort of uh, out of proportion here, it's because of I'm wearing a cast, okay? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I mean this. Pray for Rexella and me. The devil as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour, 1 Peter 5, 8. And for the last eight or 10 shows, we've had something happen to either one of us. And I'll tell you, Satan hates what we're doing. But Rexella said yesterday, after being sick all night and losing all of her food because of the strong medicine and to kill the pain, she said, I'll be there, honey, I'll be there. I have never missed a meeting in 70 years. Never been absent. I've had 65 treatments with cancer. I've had two knees put in. I've had bleeding ulcers and they gave me just uh, two days left to live because there wasn't enough to make the heart beat. And I still get up from those places that I'm not going to miss and I haven't missed <laughs> in 70 years. And you've been precious, honey. Oh, thank you. With all the illnesses both of us have had, we've had our share. Yes. You hardly ever missed once. You did for surgery. Yeah. Praise God for you. Thank Amen. you, Jesus, that she's here with me tonight. Because this program wouldn't be what it ought to be without Rexel. Oh, thank you so very, yeah. very much. Well, falling on the ice wasn't very pleasant a couple of days ago, but... Uh, Thank the Lord that uh, we have a help, you know, medically speaking. And uh, I deeply appreciate the fact that doctors are really aware of how to help us when we need them. Now, we are going to back up to something that happened in Paris. We all know about the tax, uh, first at the satirical newspaper and then in a Jewish-owned store. It brought great, remember that? great solidarity with leaders of the world. And here you see it. The Wall Street Journal, France rallies millions against terror. And World Unites in Paris. Whoa, that's probably one of the largest groups I ever saw. Europe on edge attacks in Paris stir political waters. Barrage of anti-terror raids rattles Europe. And then going on, French Premier declares war on radical Islam as Paris girds for the rally. And France deploys nearly 5,000 police officers to protect Jewish schools. Now you remember, they have uh, a slogan of how they want to kill the Jews also in particular. And the French recognize this. So they have deployed those 5,000 police. French hunt the terrorist world reacts with universal outrage, universal values. Again, from the Wall Street Journal, a backlash swells in Europe. And terror attacks sparks fears among French Muslims. Well, certainly not all Muslims were participating, but they could fear. Thousands march against Islam in Germany. You know, first I'm going to stop there. Why Germany? You know, this great attack happened in France. Why did thousands march against Islam in Germany? Jack, can you please help me to understand this a little bit better? Angela Merkel wants to protect the Muslims there, but the neo-Nazi party is rising, the group that killed six million Jews. And now 15,000 of them marched and said, we will get these Muslims if we have to. 
real trouble is coming, ladies and gentlemen. Rex Sala, when you talked about what just happened and they went into the Jewish store to kill all the Jews they could, my heart was blessed because a dear black brother loved those Jews and he put a whole group of them in the freezer and saved their lives. Amen. Thank God when people show love one to another. Let's go on. Yes, absolutely. Now we want to go on with something uh, that was a little bit sad because our president was not there for that great march. Take a look. Absent of Obama and Biden at Solidarity event draws criticism. And it should. Yes, we heard a lot about that. Now Condoleezza Rice, former U.S. Secretary of State, says, what we're seeing here is that when the United States steps back and speaks softly, nobody listens. And this really touches Jack's heart. Belgium towards terror plot. Oh, thank the Lord they did. Reflecting a rising threat right there in Belgium. And then again, take a look. Now, this is the one who's responsible for what happened in Belgium, Abu Imran. And Jack, I'm going to stop here again. If you would reflect a little bit about who the leader of what happened in Belgium really was. This really touches Jack's heart because the attack was not, or the planned attack rather, was not far from where his relatives live. You know, my uncle Franz Van Impe has a street named after him in Belgium because he stood with the Americans against the Nazis during World War II. And that's in the area of Alst, Itherham, Denderleer, Dennaten. And the relatives I'm thinking about now live in those areas, and Vilvorda was one of the places they just attacked. And this man who heads up the Muslims in Belgium said, we are going to take over, and we don't even have to have war to do it because we can have four wives and have so many children that in a number of years, we'll be able to win the nation every time we vote. But you're going to see more terrorism in Belgium, in France, all of the European Union. They got 58 no-go zones right now in Sweden, and the police dare not go in. It's terrible. It's dangerous. And you're going to see all that today. And Rexella, I'll tell you, it's time that people get right with God because there's going to be a blitzkrieg against the world soon. I predict it because of the Bible. Jack, I am going to read one of the saddest headlines that I have ever read in my life. I guess the one in Pakistan where they attacked the school and all those children, 132 children were killed. I cried over that one. But take a look at this next headline. Islamic extremist attack in Nigeria named the deadliest massacre in history. Hundreds of bodies, too many to count, remain strewed in the bush in Nigeria. Let me tell about that, Rex, right, right, right Jack, now, please. because they burned down 3,400 buildings there in Africa and killed 18,000 in a couple of raids. This is what I'm talking about. It's going to happen maybe even in America sooner than we think. All right, then going on here, death toll, if you'll read this with me, from USA Today reaches 141 in massacre at Pakistan School, and that is what I referred to just a moment ago. 132 precious children. I cannot imagine that kind of mentality. Can you, friends, to go into a school? What do the children do? Nothing. Jack, I am going to turn this over. Oh. I want to ask him, according to the Bible, how far will they go? Where will this all lead? I used this a few weeks ago, but I want to show the brutality of the Taliban. It's not just ISIS. There are 47 of these groups, and all they want to do is kill everyone they can. And I am telling you the truth now. Here is how vicious they were because it was a military school and their parents were involved in the military against ISIS, against the Taliban and all these groups. They went in and there were 141 killed, but 132 of them were children. And you talk about brutality. I believe they fit Jude 110, brute beast barbarians. They went in and put a bullet in each child's Head and made all the others watch until they were all dead. God, 
help those kind of savages. Now, it's going to get worse, ladies and gentlemen. Why? Because this book says so. They came to Jesus and said, tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of your coming? And Jesus began to enumerate things. And he said, first of all, there will be false Christs and false prophets. There'll be wars, rumors of wars, famine, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. And then he mentioned a specific sign in verse 37. As the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. How was it Noah's day, the whole world filled with violence and terrorism? He said, it's going to be like that. Two shall be in the dead, one shall be taken, one shall be left, two shall be grinding in the mill, one shall be taken, one shall be left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come, but before he comes there is mass terrorism. Hear the Lord Jesus again in Luke 21, verse 9. He says, when you hear of wars and commotions, wars and terrorism, wars and revolutionaries, be not terrified. These things must first come before what? When they are beginning, he says, then shall they see the Son of Man, Jesus, coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And so when you see these things beginning to come, look up, your redemption draws nigh. That's the redemption of the body. When he says, come up hither, Revelation 4, one, and we sweep through 187 trillion billions of miles in 11 one hundredths of a second. The twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. But he goes on in that same chapter with verse 31 and 32. He said, when these terroristic acts become overwhelming and it's coming, that indicates that my kingdom, coming back to this earth to set it up, is nigh at hand. In fact, that prayer will be answered. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Matthew 6, 10. But then in verse 32, he says, so... When you see all this terrorism, this is the generation that shall not pass. We're the ones who are going up soon. Come up hither, Revelation 4, 1, and we sweep through the heavenlies, as I said in the twinkling of an eye. Jack, we are the generation. Oh, that yeah. is revealing, isn't it, friends? We're the generation. The Bible points to that. And Absolutely. that's the resurrection of the dead. We right. go up, the dead in Christ first. Let me give the verse. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 18. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, with the dead, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, when you see all this terrorism, comfort one another with these words. Now, that's his rapture. And that takes place before the horrendous seven-year period of tribulation when terrorism gets out of hand globally. We're going home. I'll keep you out of that hour, Revelation 3.10. And then seven years later, after we're raptured, we come back with him as he sets up his kingdom and he's the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6. And he's going to put a stop to all of this warring with one another and killing one another in the name of God. Yeah, he's going to put a stop to it, Revelation 11. Verse 18. What a comfort. He's going to put a stop to it, believe me. Well, you know what? The deliberate and systematic destruction of Christianity was revealed in 2014 as we look back in an unprecedented way. 2014, the year of the Christian genocide, more than any in recent history were killed. The MI5 Muslims planning mass casualty attacks on the West. British cleric warns ISIS retaliation could dwarf 9-11. Oh, my. The U.K. Army cadets told not to wear uniform in public as a jihadi threat continues. Can you believe that one? Don't wear your uh, cadet outfit. They might kill you. What a threat that is. Canadian authorities overheard plans for potential ISIS-inspired knife and gun attacks. And Canadians told to prepare for a lengthy battle against terrorism. Now, they're friends. That's our neighbor to the north, the Canadians. And Nation of USA yesterday. Now, here's a, a wonderful, wonderful article by Cal Thomas, whether we're an empire or not. 
We're reaching the end of the road. Oh, my, are you kidding? And then Robert Spencer, author of the Jihadi Watch blog, says, there has been evidence that police are hesitant to go into these training camps. Now, I'm going to put something on the screen right now. There are training camps here in the United States, and they know where they are, and they know that they're there, and they know that they're training. Can you believe it? There they are. That's our country, friends. All Muslim training camps. Going, they're getting ready. Yes. Humiliate Christians until they convert. My, oh, my. Well, ha what happens if they do? Even Christians who convert get beheaded. And, you know, I'm happy for what Jack said a moment ago, friends. Let not your heart be troubled because Jesus is coming back to stop all of this. But we are living in a very dangerous world, aren't we, Jack? Oh, Rexella. Listen to this, Ezekiel 33, 3, Old Testament prophet. He says, when you see the sword coming upon your land, blow the trumpet and warn my people that God has called Dr. Jack Van Impey and Dr. Rexella to warn the world. And we've been under some threats, but we're going to keep warning the world because the hour is coming that's going to get so bad that life won't be worth living. Now, in Revelation chapter 6 to 18, there are 21 different judgments. And as I said earlier, in Matthew 24, 37, one of the main ones is terrorism. Now, how bad does it get? It's going to be bad for the Jew and the Christian. The Bible says in Jeremiah 30, verse 7, the last for that day is great, so that none is like it. None. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, and Jacob is Israel, 2 Kings 17, 34. Listen to Jesus in Matthew 24, 21. He said, For then shall be great tribulation such as never was since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be again. Now, in Revelation 6, 9, he says, I saw the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. And for the testimony which they held in Revelation 20, verse 4, he says, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded again for the Lord Jesus Christ. The Arabs, radicalism, has a special way of killing people. Number one, Surah 533 is crucifixion, and Surah 47, 4 is beheading. Ladies and gentlemen, it's coming. And if you should be left behind, because I believe we're going to be raptured out of here soon, but if you're left behind, remember this. There's a crown for those who die for Jesus. Revelation 2.10. Be faithful unto death. He says, now give you a crown of life. Mm, Jack, that's wonderful. Yeah. A crown for... Well, you know what, friends? There's something else that's very, very dangerous out there, and that's a growing theology uh, concerning Israel. Concerning Israel. Take a look at this, please. Replacement theology. The black sheep of Christendom. And then the roots of replacement theology. Oh, you know, friends, I've been asked that question, what is replacement theology? Now, it has to do with the Jew, and I would like to ask Jack that question. He'll answer it for us. What is replacement it's theology? It's the most damnable, heretical teaching that's against the Jews that's ever been propagated, and it's going on in 18 of our Christian denominations today. God forgive you. Now, it's so anti-Semitic that it really follows along with our God told us what happened in 1 Chronicles 21.1. Satan stood against Israel. Satan stood against the Jew. What? They said, every time the word Israel appears, you make it the church. Replacement theology. And every time Jerusalem appears, you make it heaven. Now, where did you birds think that you could diminish God's word like that? Deuteronomy 4, 2 says, do not add to nor diminish from the word of God. God says, don't do it. Now, don't you think the Holy Spirit who wrote this book, every word of it, knows enough about what it's about since he was in glory with the Son and the Father from all eternity? 
holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. 2 Peter 1, 21. And John 16, 12 is the New Testament. Jesus said, I've yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come here to earth? Then he says, he'll guide you into all truth. So every word from Genesis to Revelation is written by the Holy Spirit, and don't you monkey with it. 2,604 times you say Israel is the church, and 930 times you say that Jerusalem is heaven. You have tampered with 3,534 words that the Holy Spirit wrote. Shame on you guys, and you call yourselves Christian ministers. Study the book and know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, yeah, stick to the Bible written by God, the Holy Spirit. Now, friends, we're going to go on here, and I can't believe the next headline I'm going to show you because Arab terrorists try to burn Jews alive in Jerusalem. They threw firebombs in their homes and tried to burn entire families as they would sleep while tears for proposed invasion of Israel. Message at Temple Mount, time for slaughter of Jews. And Jews, the end is near, says graffiti in Rome. Ooh, that sounds very anti-Semitic, doesn't it? Now, there are 18 denominations that have turned their back and said, the Lord is finished with Israel, Jack. And you know what's wrong with you guys who have all your churches and you hate the Jew? Satan stood against the Jew. I say it again, First Chronicles 21.1. Why? Because God loved them. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. My God, Yahweh, so loves the Jew that he said, they are mine, elect Isaiah 42, 1, 45, 4, and chapter 65, verses 9 and 22. He says, they are the apple of mine eye, Zechariah 2, 8. I am betrothed to them, engaged to them, the Jew, my people, Hosea 2, 19, and Israel is my wife, Jeremiah 3, 14. That's love, isn't it? And you guys are doing everything you can to destroy them, boycott them. God forgive you. Do you know that the greatest revival in history is coming during the tribulation hour by the 144,000 mentioned in Revelation 7, 48? And these are not Jehovah's Witnesses, nor are they British Israelites who claim it. Why? Listen to who they are. Jude, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Nephtali, Manasseh, Simeon, Levi, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, and Benjamin. And what about it? They're out there preaching the gospel of the kingdom, Matthew 24, 14. The king is coming. It's the greatest revival in history. Verse 9, I saw a group like no man could number, like the sand of the sea. What's important about it? Verse 14, they came out of the great tribulation and washed their robes white in the blood of the land. And this crowd that you hate and the ones you say are now the church and... Jerusalem is heaven. They're going to bring the greatest movement of God the world has ever seen. And at that point, Jesus Christ comes back and he sets his foot on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem because he loves his people, the ancient Jew. And Luke 1, 32 and 33 says, that Gabriel was talking to the Virgin Mary, your son shall be great. He shall sit on the throne of David in Jerusalem. And he shall reign over the house of Israel forever and ever. You've got your theology mixed up somewhere. Get it right with the book and God. Isn't it wonderful, Jack, that we have a very positive message for you today? The message is that Jesus is coming back. And before he left, I've said this to you so often. He said, don't let your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. I'm coming to stop all of this mess, the massacres and all the rest. And Jesus is coming back for his children to set up his kingdom on earth. How good. Are you ready? Have you opened your heart to Jesus as your Savior? Please pray this prayer with Jack as he gives us wonderful invitation right now, Jack. Good news, God also loves you. God so loved the world, the Gentiles, that he gave his only begotten son. Your part, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but if everlasting life receive him. Lord Jesus, I heard about you today and your love for me. Oh, Jesus, I see everything frightening around me. I want to be ready for your great coming. Come into my heart now. I'm trusting in the merits of your precious shed blood to wash me, cleanse me, and save me. Come in, Jesus. Amen. 
Amen. If you pray that prayer, please write to me. There's my address. I'll send you this little book of first steps in a new direction. Hey, you've just become a child of God. You've just been forgiven of any sin in your life you don't want there. Write to me. I'll send this to you. And now, woo, here's our wonderful new offer. Beware, false prophets. Take a look at the promo, please. Beware, false prophets, damnable heresies, and doctrines of demons are the final signs and dangers facing Christianity in the 21st century. The Bible warns that ministers will arise who will betray the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible calls them apostates, antichrists, and super deceivers, like Judas, who for the almighty dollar delivered Christ to the enemies of the gospel. That hour has arrived. Bible translators remove 91 verses claiming Christ is the Son of God from the Holy Bible for decadent versions created for Muslims. Does it matter? Shockingly so. Why? Christianity's foundation and major theological voids have been destroyed by what the Bible calls doctrines of demons. This same group of blasphemers have obliterated the major Bible doctrines for salvation, including the deity of Christ, his virgin birth, his sacrificial blood atonement, his bodily resurrection, and his second coming. Who are these Judas Iscariots? Have they committed the unpardonable sin against Christ and the Holy Spirit? Order Dr. Van Empey's shocking video, Beware False Prophets, Damnable Heresies and Doctrines of Demons, and find out. Oh, friends, don't put it off. There's a hundred number and there's the address. Oh, certainly we need to beware of what's out there. Now, everything we said today is on here and so very, very much more. You know, the hour has arrived just prior to the coming of the Lord. So make that call, will you please? We'd love to get this in the mail as soon as we hear from you. And now here's our announcer to tell you exactly how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. My friend, to order Beware False Prophets, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. I want to encourage you. Be sure and make that call right away. There's the 800 number and there's the address. Everything we said today is on here. And so very, very much more you need to know. I want to close with this wonderful thought. The best way to face life's changes is to look to the unchanging God. I look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.